Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create checklists in Microsoft Access. You'll be able to automatically have the date and time entered when you click on that completed date time field. All right, we're not going to use default values. I'm going to show you how to use a little event. Then when you're all done running down the checklist for the day or however often you do it, when you're finished, click that archive button on the bottom and it will save all that information to a history table and refresh the checklist so it's clean for the next time you want to use it. Today's question comes from Ezra from Seattle, Washington. Ezra asks, I have a checklist of safety issues that needs to be done every day. I need to store the date and time that each issue was performed. I would like the user to be able to check a box, then have the date and time automatically fill in. And then when the entire checklist is done, be able to save all that information for reporting later on. How can I do this? Well, let's get started, Ezra. This is my blank database template. You could download a copy of this for free off my website. I'll put a link in the description down below the video. Pretty much all we need out of this template is this continuous form that I'm going to use in a minute. I have a video on how this is built. If you don't know how to use continuous forms, go watch that video. I'll put a link down below as well. Let's start by creating a table for our checklist. So create table design. I like an ID for an auto number in every one of my tables. Let's put item in here. That'll be short text. That's the checklist items name or item name if you want to. Item name. And then we'll put completed and that'll be a date time. Now don't set a default value because we're going to set that value when the item is actually completed. I want it to be blank if it hasn't been done yet. Okay. Okay, let's save this as my checklist T. That's my checklist table. So in this checklist table, we'll just put a list of items in here. All right, sweep floor, take out trash, uh, do dishes, send Rick Christmas present. Okay, I'm just kidding about that last one. Okay. So this is my basic checklist, and this will get repeated every day. And if you want to add items or delete items, you can do that right in here. Now, Ezra, I know you said you wanted a box to check when the item was completed. We're going to do something better. We're just going to make it so all they have to do is click on the completed field, and it will fill in. But to do that, let's go over to the continuous form here. Save changes to this. Come over here, continuous form. We're going to copy this and paste it. Copy, paste. This will be my checklist F, my checklist form. Right click. Design view. This is my basic continuous form template. Let's go up here, open up the properties for this form. We're going to go to all and set the record source equal to checklist T. It's the only table that I have in this database. All right, we're going to come in here and we're going to add existing fields and drop them right here in the details section. We don't really need the ID. Let's just bring in item name and completed. Drop those like that and I can get rid of these guys now. Delete these. All right, we're going to slide item name right up here like that. Okay, and then completed can go right next to it. And you want date and time, so we'll make this a little bit bigger. All right, now let's go to the properties for this completed. Let's set the format equal to whatever you want. I'm going to go MMDDYYHH colon NNAM slash PM. And if you want, if it helps to see like the day of the week in here, that's fine too. Go DDD. So you get like THU for Thursday. All right, whatever format you want. I cover these formats in a different class. I'll put a link to that down below. All right, and we'll just change our labels up here, right? Checklist item. And then over next to this over here, completed date time. Okay, looks good so far. Slide that up. Slide that closed. Save it. Close this. Close this. Let's open it up now. And that's what we got. Looks pretty good. And if these have to be in any particular order, which you didn't mention, you could simply throw another field in here to order these. Or you can sort them alphabetically or do whatever you want. I'll put the custom sort order in the extended cut video for the members. But now, here's what I want to happen. When the user clicks on one of these boxes, all right, I want the current date and time to fill in. To do that, we're going to use something called the onClick event. The onClick event runs whenever you click on a field. So... Right click, design view. It requires a little tiny bit of programming, but don't be scared. Visual Basic is not hard if you take it step by step. Open up the properties for this box. Go to events. Find the on click event, which is right on top here. See that on click? 
hit the dot 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 button this will bring up the visual basic window you may get a window asking you which builder you want pick the code builder now in here we're going to say completed equals now that's it that's all you got to do save it come back over here to your database I'm gonna close this and reopen it okay ready click look at that it fills in right now click see that click that's the on click event doesn't do anything to these guys all right but if I click over here click it fills it in see click let me format it to show seconds to you so you can see it actually working here let's do this let's slide this out like that let's move you over here let's align this guy right like that since the date lines up to the right open this guy up let's put seconds in here in the format H H N N S S. That way you can see it working better. Ready? Click. See? 121004. Click. 121006. Now, one thing you might want to be careful of is if you click here, that's fine. If you click down here, it's going to keep adding new records. So you got a couple options. You can make it so you can't add new records in here. That's one way to do it. We can just go to Design View, look up the properties for this form. Go to data and go to allow additions and say no. That way you can't add new items on this form. You can only add them at the table or make a different form. See, I can't add new items down here. That might be the way you want to do it. Or you can simply come into your code here and say something like if is null item name, then exit sub. In other words, if there is no item name, don't put a date time value in there. They'll exit out of the sub without doing the completed equals now. So in order to do that, I'll have to put that allow items back on. Let's do a, allow additions as yes. Save changes. And now if I open it up, if I click over here and there's nothing in the checklist item name, it doesn't do anything. Okay, so there's two ways to handle that. I don't want to confuse you with too much code. So if you like the other way better, that's fine. This way at least allows you to add items, right? Go home. And now you can click here and put that value in there if you want to. Okay, now it's the end of the day. You want to archive this information and save it into a backup table. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to copy this checklist T. We're going to copy and paste. We're going to call this checklist history T. It's our historic data. And we only want to copy the structure. I don't want all the data, just the structure. Hit OK. All right, there's my checklist history. It's the same table, but it's empty. Now I'm going to need two queries. One query is going to copy the information from checklist T into history T. And then the second query, an update query, is going to simply erase the dates out of this one. All right, so it's clean and ready to go for tomorrow. All right, ready? Here we go. First, we'll make an append query. Now, I've got separate videos for append and update queries. Go watch those if you've never done this before. Create query design. We are going to pull records from the checklist T. You can close the Add Tables pane. Bring in the item name and the completed. We don't need the ID in this case. Go to Design. Change this to an Append Query. We're going to append these records into Checklist History T. Hit OK. Save this as Checklist Append Q. All right, now we can close it. Now the checklist history right now is empty. If I run the query, double click on it, all right, nothing appears to happen. You may get a warning message that says you're about to append five rows or whatever into a table. Do you want to do it? Hit OK. I have my warnings turned off and I'm going to show you how to turn those warnings off in your code in just a minute. But now if I open up my history table, there they are. Okay. If I run it a second time, double click, it'll append them again. See that? Now it's got the same set of data. So what we have to do is clear the data from the checklist next. All right, let me erase all the stuff in the history table. Goodbye. All right, now we need an update query to go into the checklist table and make these blank. So it's ready for the next day. All right, you ready? Create query design. Bring in checklist T. Close it. Change this to an update query. Now we're going to change something. 
All right, we're going to change completed update to null. I'm going to set the completed date equal to blank, nothing, null. Save this query as checklist update queue. Okay, so what we're going to do in our code is we're going to run the append query first, double click. All right, that's got that in there. Now we're going to clear the checklist T. So ready, run the update query, double click, and now open up the checklist table, and those are blank. All right, see what we're doing here? Now if I run, now if I come into my form again, let's go into the checklist form, put some dates and times in here. All right, we're going to finish these all up. Now, if I run my append query again, append, I should have the new set of dates and times. Yep, see, all, tw all 219 now. And now I can clear my checklist T. Okay, but I don't want the user to have to mess with this stuff. So let's put a button in our form right down here on the bottom that says archive or completed or whatever you want to do. All right, design view. We're going to drop a button right down here. Find command buttons. Drop it down here. Cancel the wizard. Yeah. There's wizard actions you could use to run queries, All right? It's under miscellaneous run query. You could do it that way, but I don't like doing it that way. I want to teach you guys a little bit of programming. It's not scary. I want you to learn this with me. All right, let's put in here archive. That's the name of the button. Actually, that's the caption on the button. Let's give the button a name. Make Alex happy. If you don't know who Alex is, then you haven't watched enough of my videos. All right, <laughs> this will be the archive button, BTN. Let's put some code in it. Right click. Build event. Build event is what happens when we click on the archive button. We have to run both of our queries, okay, and then probably refresh the screen. So let's do that. Let's do command dot open query. What's the name of the query? We're going to run checklist append q first. Then do command dot open query checklist update q. Okay, we'll probably need to requery the form in here. Let's try it. Let's see what we got first. Let's save this, come back out here. All right, so close this, close this. I like to close down forms after I put major changes in them or some VB code, that way they open up fresh. All right, so let's open up our checklist again. Let's put a couple things in here. Let's say maybe you didn't finish a checklist. All right, hit the archive button. And as I suspected, these didn't clear off the screen, but I bet you they're clear if we close it and reopen it, watch. Yeah, we'll need a requery in there. That's okay. Just to requery the information in here so it reloads from the table. But let's check our history table. And yep, there they are. Right there. You can see how these items weren't finished. Okay. Let's put that requery in the code. Let's go back into our checklist design view. Let's go back to the code window. This little button right there will bring you back to the code window. I put it up here on my quick launch toolbar as well. Whoop, there we go. All right. So right here we need a me.requery. All right, me.requery says reload the records that are in the current form. Because we've cleared them, I want to see that update in the form. Also, I promised I'd show you how to turn off those warnings. Because some of you might be getting warnings when you run your append and your update queries. I have them turned off in access. But all you have to say here is do command dot set warnings false. That turns the warnings off. And then when you're done with your queries, do command dot set warnings true. Turn them back on again. Because if you want them on, then you want to be able to see them again. This just turns them off temporarily for your button. Okay, so let's go back to the database, close it, open it up again, put some new values in here. All right, and then archive, boom. Save the data to the table. You can see right down here, there's our new records. Okay, and this one is cleared. Now, one other thing you got to watch out for. If I click on these buttons, when I click here, notice this record's still dirty the pencils there. If I hit the archive button right now, okay, sometimes you'll get an error message. All right, I got it through one of the iterations I was doing earlier because technically when you do this, this record hasn't been saved yet. So one more thing you might want to throw in here at the very top is a me.refresh that says save any record that happens to be currently being edited. Okay, so if I do that, if I hit this now, it refreshes that record first, then runs the query. All right, that just makes sure that your data is safe. So there's not a whole lot of programming here to do a whole lot of stuff, okay? So there you go. There's the basics of how to take a checklist, right? Click to fill in these values here. This will work for pretty much anything that involves a checklist, like doing student attendance. I did an attendance database that I put on my uh, website on YouTube, I don't know, a year or so ago. Very similar concepts. All you have to do is put your class roster here, 
And then if they're you know in class, just check, check, check. And if they're not in class, just don't don't click on them. Okay. And then when you're done for the day, hit the archive button. Yeah, and then you're ready for the next day. Want to learn more about these checklists? Well, in the extended cut for members only, I will show you a couple of different tricks. First, we'll convert those queries over to SQL statements because I don't like cluttering my database with lots of different queries. So if I can convert that over to an SQL statement and put that right in my code, I will. Then we'll set up a custom sort order. For example, if in my cleanup list, so things have to be done a certain order, one, two, three, four, five, I'll show you how to set that up. We'll add conditional formatting. So when an item is done, the whole line goes green, not just that particular box, but the whole line, except for the order, of course. The checklist item and the completed date time will go green. And then I'll show you how to set up multiple lists. So you can have your class roster, your cleanup list, your Star Trek series list, and lots more. Here's the extended cut database. Notice my queries are gone. I converted those over to SQL statements. I can open up any one of these lists by double clicking on it. There's my Star Trek list. Which ones have I watched? Well, I finished this one, I finished this one, and then I'm done, I can archive. And seriously though, I've, I've finished them all. So I haven't finished Discovery yet though, so I'm, I'm still working on that one. So that's in the extended cut, silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to share it wherever you think it might help people who are interested in access. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to be notified every time I post a new video. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link below to join my mailing list. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over three hours long, and you can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1, and that is free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. If you have a specific problem you need help with or you'd like to discuss having a database built for your needs, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting. Be sure to follow my blog and find me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by accesslearningzone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.